Hey guys, a, a while back, like when we did the car 15 that was all painted up, someone asked if I would do a painting demo and I plan to paint my rifle, so I'm finally getting around to that. So, won't be any shooting in this video, or at least I hope not, because we're at my house. So, uh, empty your rifle, all that good stuff, and we're gonna go ahead and start getting set up for paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ditch this over here onto these super fly chairs and put something down that I don't mind getting paint on. So that would be this like small, nasty sheet. It started white, I swear. So get that laid out. All right. So the next part is to basically, I'm not gonna go through and like Put lacquer thinner all over my gun to make sure it's completely clean I'm not that worried about it I imagine this is gonna get kind of mucked up with use and I'm totally okay with that so what I'm gonna do though is tape off anything I don't want paint on so like the optic the end of the flashlight maybe the top of the pressure pad that kind of thing everything else is getting paint on it so let's move to the tape okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my optic covered and I'm not too terribly worried about going crazy. I just want a good seal around the lens. And I'm literally gonna leave the tape just kinda slapped onto the front of it while we do this. So if you're looking for this to be like super artsy, craftsy, you're probably gonna be cringing throughout this because this is gonna be kinda rough and tumble. So same thing with the back side, except I actually have pressure pads that turn the thing off and on that I'm gonna need to cover. So I'll do that as well. So this one will probably get a couple shots of it. If I'm really lucky, I'll like turn the optic on while I'm doing this and just burn a bunch of battery for nothing. And I don't have anything to hang this from, so I'm literally gonna be painting it on the ground like you see it. I'm gonna do the same thing to my flashlight. I'm gonna come up and just get the end so that I don't coat the lens with anything I don't want on there. Which, surprisingly, as close to the muzzle as it is, doesn't have any black crap all over it. I'm gonna try to keep it just flat to the surface so I don't have to, you know, I don't end up with lines all over it. If I do, it's not the end of the world. Uh, other than that, might hit just the pad on my pressure switch. All right, I really hope I have enough of this. I think I do, but man, I hope I do. So, <laughs> that would be bad. All right. But if you do the base coat in the palest color you got, then you don't have to uh, worry about subsequent layers coating. The other cool thing is if branding bothers you, like all over, like I hate all this, you get to cover all that up. And the dust cover pretty well keeps everything out. All the pins and everything are gonna keep working just fine. You can go across the bottom. Try not to blow my tape off. The only bad thing about doing this outside is you get every bit of the wind. The other unfortunate part is the more you tilt the can, the less coat you get when you spray. We're gonna try to keep it somewhat upright. You do have to worry about getting, I mean, you don't really have to worry about any of it. You're spray painting a freaking gun, but you gotta kinda come down along the edges as well. But literally all we're doing is just getting everything coated. 
The only bad thing about spray paint is you're gonna end up with everything feeling kind of tacky for a little while until you wear it in. We are gonna let that settle for just a little while, flip it over and do the other side. I'm gonna put all my weight a lot closer so I don't end up with the wind flaring everything up and rolling on top of the gun because that would be really crappy. Okay, I think we have left it to dry for long enough and we have rain coming in in like an hour so we're gonna kind of speed through this. All right, I'm just gonna flip the thing over. You can see the difference. You can also see that this is the side that sat up. Okay, so we have actually used a wet wipe because sometimes having babies is convenient and cleaned off some of that dusty crap. Again, by no means is this professional. So we're gonna spray the rest of the gun down and just get it covered in ultra flat tan or whatever the crap they call this. Probably khaki. Here we go. It'd be really cool if we filled that QD mount full of paint it just wouldn't work anymore. That would be awesome. And now we wait. It is worth noting that if you leave your safety in one position, you may want to come back around and do it again, or you'll have like a shadow where your safety was. Obviously, this is not loaded and the hammer's dropped, so it's on fire right now. But not a big deal. Oh no, bug, you're gonna die. Well, now I have a bug as part of my camo, which how cool is that? All right. All right, now we're gonna let it dry for like ever. Hey, welcome back to the <laughs> Okay. We're gonna try again. We're gonna try again. Hey, welcome back. Today we're gonna be handling these here. Well, not that one. Today we're gonna do the green. So the first thing that we need to do, we've adjusted our tape on our rifle. We have our lovely brown shipping paper, which I cannot claim the idea is my own. Saw that on nine hole reviews, and it works super great because masking is always better. You'll notice that we are in my garage, and I found out that my nasty sheet is actually a tablecloth, so it works out pretty decent. But what I'm going to do now is tear this paper up into any kind of odd angles that I see fit. So, real quick. And it doesn't have to be a huge chunk, it just has to be enough to paint off the edge. So, we'll just start tearing just kind of a rounded shape we can use. We get something a little bigger this time. The only bad thing about the shipping paper is it tends to want to come off in some kind of jagged edges sometimes. So if you're looking for cleaner lines, you may want to take like a razor knife or something to it. Then you should really control what you're doing. But there's a nice jagged angle that we can use in lots of different ways. And we'll do just like one more for giggles. And if we want anything different, we'll figure it out later. But as much fun as watching me tear paper probably is, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, one thing real quick, in the previous part one-ish, if you wanna call it that, you'll notice that I do have that shadow because I never did come back. That's totally fine. I will do a layer of green here and it'll cover it right up and you'll never know the difference. 
And before too long, it'll probably have some kind of scratches and dings there anyway. But just so you see what we're talking about on that shadow line, you can tell there's spots where it's a little bit lighter and darker as you go, buffer tube especially. But as you run the thing, it's gonna start to get scuffed up and get kind of a battle-worn finish. So that's always fun, right? Look like you actually use your crap. So I'm gonna get situated here and we're gonna start painting. Okay, so with a used spray bomb, one thing I always like to do is A, make sure the nozzle's plenty clear, and B, shoot a couple little spurts to actually see where I'm spraying. So that's pretty much coming straight out. I got a little bit offset, but nothing too crazy. So I like forward angled lines. You can do whatever the crap you want. So I'm gonna start just with the back side of the stock. You can see I don't have I'm not like taped down or anything. I've just got it loosely fit. It helps to blur the line a little bit. So here we get. This thing is spraying chunkage, if you can't see that. So I'm probably gonna have to clean this tip up with maybe a little bit of acetone, lacquer thinner, alcohol, whatever you got laying around. This sheet is actually chipping the stuff off. That's working decent. Let's see if I'm still spraying chunks. Oh, that's much better. All right. All right. And we're just gonna move on down the line. You can see it's laid kind of a, a little bit of a blurred edge because it's not laid totally flat and like stuck to it. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna leave a chunk of space between just in case I do grow a set and come back and decide to do some black. So now, once I've got kind of one edge, I'm gonna have to start laying two pieces. So I'm just very gingerly gonna lay that over, get my secondary line here. This isn't gonna matter a ton because it's on the buffer tube, but you can see how we're creating kind of a tiger stripe line. And if you hit from the low angle on each side, it kind of helps with coming back to it if you're worried about trying to match the other angle. So then when, as like I flip the thing, I'll be able to see where I was and get a close approximation to what I had before. <laughs> Remember when I said I would hit my safety? I missed. <laughs> That's okay. See how bad that looks. Ooh, I like that. You can see when you're using spray paint, it's actually drying pretty quick. Especially if you don't lay it on too thick. I might touch that just a little bit since I left a paper line. That's one thing about doing it really fast. You are going to touch other spots and end up with a little bit of paper marking. But we're not terribly worried about that. You probably hear my children screaming in the background. It's a good thing they're cute. Now the only other rifle, oh, I'm probably screaming in your ear there. The only other rifle I've actually painted did not have a light to stand it off with. So I'm gonna kind of have to like wrap around that a little bit. So we pretty much got it effectively greened up. I might do one more little strip on the barrel. All right, so that's side A, totally done. So we'll let that dry for probably about an hour, flip it and do the other side. because it's like what Lowe's had. So it's not Krylon or anything like that. 
Hopefully it doesn't react poorly. It's funny, maybe I should have just taped the gun off instead of painting black on what was originally black. I have discovered that I like putting masking tape on the paper and I can kind of stick it a little bit tighter where I'd like to. Do it again. Alright. <clears throat> For now, I think that's gonna do it. I probably regret it. Yeah, it looks cool. Ta -da. All right, guys, we have the final product sitting here totally dry. Uh, it has been almost a week since we shot the last bit of painting. Been kind of sick and sounded like I got throated by a cactus. So finally have some form of voice back. So we are good to go ahead and do a flyby of the rifle. And we'll just give you a good final look at the gun. And that will about do us. So I do have the stock set back in at what my normal length would be running. I can pull it back out and kind of show the full pattern. But I am not unhappy with it. I don't think I like it quite as much as the Car 15, but it's probably just because it doesn't have a carry handle. I'll go ahead and flip the thing so you can see the other side. Just realized on the optic I have like a big square where the tape was but again this is pretty rough the whole point is just to break up the color and to make it look kind of neat and rough and I think it did that but with I'm certain very little use especially on this black there will probably be paint marring up fairly quickly in fact, because the BCM stock fits so tight, pretty sure it's gonna rub most of this off of my buffer tube fairly quickly. But again, when you spray paint and you don't go through and run like any kind of cleaner or anything on the gun first, you're gonna lose some stuff. And that's totally all right because we're gonna use it and end up scratching some stuff off anyway. But that is a final look at the gun. Um, I don't know if you got the optic at all. But you can see that there is, other than maybe dust, no paint on the optic or anything like that. I'll go ahead and run the, and you can see our pressure pad stayed fairly clean. And then I'll run the action so you can see that the bolt did okay. There's actually a little bit of residue in there on the top side. But that's going to wear off fast. So... After I shoot it a little bit, I'll probably have to clean just a little bit, make sure there's no paint junk up inside my gun. But pretty happy with it. But that is our rifle painting video. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it other than just a dork shooting paint all over his gun. With that being said, thanks for watching Triple F Shooting, and we'll see you in the next one.